I uh, just got the recording started. Um, Stefan, do you want to moderate? Yeah, I have to eat first. I haven't seen the issue yet. Uh, I'll, I'll stop presenting and you can take it over. Yeah, yeah OK. Let's go ahead. All right, so is it recording already? Yeah. It's all right. So you, you gave an intro. Uh, February is the uh, 22nd committee meeting of KCP. Welcome, everybody. Um, we have two topics on the agenda, I think. First one is Paul about issues. Paul, if you're here. He is under the weather today. Um, but he and I spoke about this. So. Okay. Um, I can comment. So, and, and you're not sharing at the moment, I don't think, Stefan. Oh, I don't. No. I. Yeah. Do you want to share? I try. Let me. Okay. Uh, while you're doing that, so uh, we do have a lot of issues and PRs open in the project, and some of them um, are are old and maybe have been fixed or are no longer relevant as the project has uh, advanced, and some of them certainly still are. So. Uh, this was just a reminder to uh, periodically go through and triage or retriage issues and make sure that things aren't getting stale. We don't have Prowl enabled in the org or on the repo, so we don't have any time-based um, changes like for stale and rotten. So um, I think part of this is around talking about what sort of labels we want to have, what sort of triaging we want to do. Uh, does it make sense to try and do it uh, periodically through these community meetings? Uh, maybe not weekly, but periodically, or just do it async as a community. So that, that's really what this is about. Um, I'm sure if there's any discussion, uh, it would be very welcome, and we can talk about that now if folks have uh, want to think about it and have some feelings that they want to just comment async, that's cool too. All right, comments about the topic. Do we actually have a reason not to just turn on Prowl for the repo? Uh, it just takes some time to do it and to know which Prowl to put it in. That's really what it is. Okay. Do we have a work item for it captured anywhere? Like, uh, we yeah. need to think about this, but when we reach this time horizon, I didn't know if we'd actually put that down somewhere. It's issue 324. Naming those numbers, Andy. I mean, I, I just searched for it. So. <laughs> Channeling your inner Brian Grant. <laughs> yes, it's Kubernetes issue 1697. <laughs> Comment. Go ahead. Just uh, for whatever it's worth, um, in Canada, we have went through this process a lot, as I imagine in in Kubernetes as well. And what what was the, a real change? The thing that actually moved the needle was using GitHub projects, especially the new version of it. So I would suggest that whatever way you want to settle on triaging, um, to at least um, try to have a visual um, aid through the GitHub projects. That's usually the easiest way because all the new issues end up visible there that are not triage. And whatever you're working on is um, in the state that where you have your focus because there's always going to be a lot of issues that are new and or stale, especially without stale bots. So you want to have that out of your um, visual focus. Yeah, I like that idea. I know Stefan had set up a project um, for KCP. It's in the org, not in the, the project itself, but it is there in GitHub. I would say we probably haven't been doing a great job at um, actively maintaining it. So coming up with a process for doing triage repeatedly through a project would be good. And um, yeah, just making sure that we have it set up the way that works for us too. Yeah, here it is. 
so we have it it's not maintained and if somebody has experience using that and knows what works and what doesn't work like filters and stuff um, help suggestions are welcome i think yeah I, I can take a stab at it at some point uh unfortunately everybody's super busy and uh this sort of thing may fall through the cracks a little bit and get lower priority but it is important that we don't just have an ever increasing number of issues one thing no, maybe that also sorry go ahead um one thing i i started i added a prototype for milestone maybe we could use that to project work yeah i do want to I, I do want to make sure that we are using the milestones appropriately and i know that there there was like a post prototype two milestone which was uh, i think i maybe renamed that but yeah i want to i want to take ownership of that and get it into shape sounds good Amit. Another thing that also helped not make this a very rigid thing is to just add an agenda item at the end of the community call that whenever there is time for it, you go through uh, the triage, the board, basically. If the agenda items, other items, they call the call, then you just skip it. Is there a way to see the new issues which are not part of the project? That's what you mean, right? My understanding about the new the new projects, because they just added this recently, is that you can have this uh, configured. But let me take a stab at it. And oh, OK, if, if they edit that, that's great. Out. I think like four yeah. weeks ago, it wasn't there. Maybe they have it now. That's what happened. Yeah, we can talk offline. Andy, um, I like the idea to to have something we do at the end of the crawl, like new items. And... Yeah, uh, we did that when I was uh, working on Cluster API, and okay. it at least got visibility in yeah. in every meeting uh, for the stuff that had come in. And even if it was just, eh, we don't really know what to do with this. Um, let's just put it in a needs more investigation category. Like that's better than nothing. But like a pipeline where things go in and they are not lost because we see some. Yeah, I'm trying to some. just double check how Cluster yeah. API was doing it, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Sounds good. Other comments, questions about projects and issues? All right, is there one? There's a second topic by, I hope I get the name right, Samyak, Samyak? Yeah, you got it right, it's Samyak. All right, go ahead. So I just show it. This is the issue you mean, right? Okay, so a brief description before I get started is uh, when we try to install a service account on a physical cluster, a Kubernetes, uh, what Kubernetes does is, is it installs the relevant secrets for the same thing. So that's what I'm trying to do when I'm trying to install Argo CD on KCP. Uh, so I'm pulling on the manifest, install manifest of Argo CD on KCP, and uh, what, and I'm not trying to worry about what it is performing on my physical clusters. But uh, when I when I'm trying to compare what an ideal situation will look like when I'm trying when I directly try to deploy Argo CD on my normal Kubernetes cluster versus when I do with KCP. So I find I found out that uh, one of the pod was running perfectly fine, but other three was not. And the and the main reasons were being the service account secrets were not being delivered to the physical clusters. So that's the thing that I wanted to raise. Uh, and if, if you guys have more hacks regarding it, or so, if I'm mistaken somewhere, please go ahead. Please okay. go. Does um does Argo explicitly request a secret be created? So or does it wait for the default token? So the the funny thing about the code um, is in the go portion of it, 
not the command line bit, but the Go portion, like it would work with a client cert if you had one. Um, but the command line requires that there be a secret. Um, let me. Is it, but is it, is it, I know there's two like, APIs, right? There's the, if you create a service account today in Cube, a secret gets created. That will not be the case forever. We are going, like Cube is changing away from that. But if you create a secret, and say that you want that secret for a service account, a token will be created. That's our public API. Is this doing the former or the latter? Is this, the command one, line... this one looks for the first secret that is of type service account token. Okay, so probably this is going into the bucket of like, if I were, my gut here is that the right thing for us to do is to never support this in KCP, the first part. First off, this is an operator. Operators don't fit the workload. 97% works by default capability, especially on something that in base cube, and like, here's my reasoning. Base cube, we're trying to turn this off. Like, I don't know where we are in 123, Stefan, but like, we're getting really close to the point where we don't have to generate those secrets. What, okay. uh, what's the new workflow going to be? Just to it's going to be, so there's two. There's what we always supported, which is if you want a secret for a service account, you shouldn't be using the service accounts secret. You should create a secret, set the annotation that says which service account you want the secret for, and a controller should create it. We should support that probably. I, I don't see a reason not to support that because there are operators that would do that, and that is the official way in Cube. Uh, reading the service account token is not actually supported in that sense. There's no public API contract for it. It just happens to work, and we are talking about removing that in general in cube in the long run. But the other one is request token. Request token long term is the best possible interface for a service account for a, a controller that needs a service account of something to ask for. If I had the choice between those two, I'd probably lean towards request token, but I don't know what actually we work for. So it's like the mindset is the basic scenarios described here we may never want to support. We need to document the workaround the workaround probably in some of these cases is the creating the secret that's a little bit easier like create the secret set the annotation uh, and i'll link in in a second where that's documented and then the question is is how often is this going to come up for non-operator workloads versus operator workloads and that's the i would guess probably a lot of these interaction style clis probably are doing this um, more formally deployed controllers probably aren't. So you have an alternative, you just don't get the easy flow. Um, this one's kind of an interesting one, but like, yeah, like, I, I don't know that this is, this description is like something we have kind of said, even in like SIGARCH, like isn't part of the actual supported API of Cube, even though people rely on it. And so there will be clusters in the future that do not support this. And so then there's a, this might, this starts to cross into that. We're probably going to break some people coming over. Is the break significant enough? And do we have enough reasoning that someone could figure out why the break is there and then, you know, have that, that architectural principle captured? So I think there's two uh, action items here. One, Samyak, uh, if you pre-create a service account and pre-create a secret with the right annotation, which will get linked in, for documentation, you should be able to make some progress. You may hit other stumbling blocks, but you should be able to get past this issue. The second action item is Clayton, if you could follow up and add a comment. Here is the doc right now, and I'll put it in the issue. What issue is it? 535. Uh, but but also just like where are we headed with KCP and service accounts? Yeah, this is an important one. Like this is a this probably should go in like our one of our core workload docs um, in the transparent multi cluster doc. Jason had called out parts of this, mm -hmm. but this is an implication of that, which is we're not trying. The transparent multi cluster is not trying to transparently support operators talking to the underlying cluster, and so we should probably clarify now that we have a concrete example of it failing. We can, or of where this would be is like we. are Here's how we would reason about it. Here's how we could use it to reason about further. And here's a, we can go through and debate the actual discussion and then put it in a workload priority order. Is this actually a bug in Argo CD then? 
technically it is. Um, Jordan has some comment somewhere that says we're going to stop doing this because we've been Sigoth has been talking about this for I mean we're five four years into Pod Identity, and the original goal of Pod Identity was to nuke service account secrets out of secrets, and so this is a great example of potentially this is something Sigoth should already be doing may already have started like someone may actually be going and doing some canvassing and we can be we should be able to find a sig auth issue which is like hey here's what we recommend here's what you should think about and then this may be input to the sig auth deprecation of um, this flow because token review ultimately is the thing that replaces this and like the clouds are already doing that like in a cloud you won't be able to get some types of secrets like this that would let you act as a principal i don't know that argo cares about it but um you know the, the the tokens generated this way won't be able to do the things that the tokens generated from the cloud account will for instance and they won't fit into like security policies inside of a cloud account so i'll say it's comment. if it's easy to push something to argo cd wouldn't time wait yeah and and this is great because uh I think, is there a SIGOTH this week? I can take that to the SIGOTH if I, maybe it's next week. I'll take it to the next SIGOTH um, as a concrete and follow up there. Oh, hey guys. Um, so I, I was facing another issue that's um, very closely related to the one that's been talked about now. So my use case is basically <clears throat> where I'm running uh, pipelines on KCP and triggers on KCP, right? Um, that is successfully running, but once the setup is there and I try to uh, actually trigger a pull request, for instance, where I've set up the triggers to listen to the pull request and run some task runs, it's actually looking for a service account, right? So there is a service account that is installed on the KCP cluster as part of setting up the triggers. But of course, that's not synced with the physical cluster. And that's where it's saying that, hey, I'm not able to find the service account. So um, just want to confirm based on what um, Clayton just was saying that, can I use secrets here as well? Um, if so, there is uh, this dependency problem of what uh, Samyuk, I'll, I'll just uh, borrow the things you have said on Slack on the thread, where Samyuk pointed out uh, that if we have to create secrets, then uh, if in the in the case of multiple clusters, right, do we continue creating secrets on every cluster? And suppose the secret is changed or needs to be updated or deleted, do we again have to do this manual work of updating this on every you know cluster on the multi-cluster setup? Uh, so, yeah. So one part of that, and I'm trying to find in Jason's, so here's transparent multi-cluster design doc. I'm actually not, I thought we had a section in here um, for, we're not going to automatically propagate, uh, you know what, it might be in the use cases one. Um, we basically said we weren't gonna automatically propagate service accounts. That's not part of the transparent multi-cluster contract because if you automatically propagate the service account down and the secrets down and you use that, it means you're tied to that cluster. Um, but we would want use cases where you've set up something consistent across those clusters so that something shows up in the workspace and you can use it. Um, I think there's a couple of pieces here. I think I missed the actual use case for the secret. So, so can you run me by one more time? Like what, what on in the physical cluster is specific to that physical cluster and what's generic part of the use case like if being able to take a being able to get a token that lets you talk to the service account in the um in the logical cluster in the workspace is something we want to support being able to access a service account on the cluster is not so which one is it is it accessing the the, the workspace service account um i think a uh, token should work so um I'll, I'll just iterate so this trigger setup and then there's a event listener setup on the kcb cluster right now if i uh trigger a github pr 
um, the event listener is able to listen to this uh, GitHub pull request. But now when it's supposed to actually do some action on this, that's where it's searching for the service account. That's where it's uh, failing. So I'm not sure if accessing the token would fix this problem or not. Yeah, this is a pretty deep one. Um, maybe this is one like we, if we want to, if we want to take the time now to go through it, um, if we have time at the end, we can go in. I think we could probably want to break the use case down and figure out the bits. I don't know that I have the full model in my head. Um, and without Jason here, like we, okay. I, I can't find a reference to the actual doc, but let's at the end of the call, if we still have time, let's, let's spend some time to dive on it. Okay. Yeah, so let's ask, is there a different topic, another topic for today? Uh, how is the prototype two overall experience going? Do we have some things we're ready to start getting feedback on and having people critique and yeah, so we we merged my PR that fleshed out the bulk of the remaining demo script work. Joachim has uh, graciously and uh, with a lot of work updated his PR to get the ingress controller in tree. I am going to do one final pass uh, as soon as I am no longer in meetings, which will be right after this. And hopefully, we can get that merged to do tomorrow. Um, we need somebody to record the demo that's on a Linux host because trying to get Ingress working on a Mac uh, through a, a VM running Docker Podman is not for the faint of heart. Um, so maybe Stefan or, or somebody else could record that. And we need to update the content, like the README and um, any other collateral to highlight the new uh, value props that are coming in so prototype. So which format is it? Is it's a video or it's a ASCII recording or something? It can be, it can be ASCII. OK. I have just Mac, but I have a running podband, so I can do that, I think. So demo script works as it is now. Right. Uh, I just can't test the ingress part, but everything else worked for me. OK. I try. If it doesn't work, I talk to Joachim. It's not uh, there yet. I mean, we need to merge um, the ongoing PR yeah. for the ingress controller. And I will add some parts to actually do something with the ingress control okay. as the demo right now is not doing anything. Otherwise, I just go to the point where it works and we can okay. update when we're ready. That's fine. Sounds good. Back to Clayton's question. Any experience? Anybody tried the demo scripts? I got I got close the other day, but then got distracted. Um, is there a new demo script? Where's the new demo script? Um, I saw uh, PR this morning. Is this merged already? Oh, prototype two. What was that, Andy? I... It's called prototype two. Okay. So prototype two is now checked in. So I checked early morning yesterday. So if it hadn't been merged yet, then. So uh, I mean, it, it's been in there for a while. It just wasn't fleshed oh, out. Okay. Oh, okay, and, it's in the PR. Okay. And that's going to get merged. <laughs> um, so that's one which maybe like a call for feedback on KCP dev would actually be really good. Uh, once it's in a state, like do is this when this goes in, do you think it's in a state for people to kick the tires or is there another follow up to it? You can run the script, and assuming your system is functioning properly, it will go end to end. It just won't demonstrate ingress related functionality. Okay. Um, and then the Mac comment was kind of interesting. Like a part of my head was like, okay, you know, what what is the best foot forward? Are we going to assume people are going to be on Macs? Is there a step below the ingress functionality or a partial ingress functionality to really, like what's the minimum flow that would still allow someone on a Mac to see the basic potential? Is it this or is it something, is it pushing through on the ingress? Is it like, I don't want to get overly fixated on environment specific stuff, but like, you know, this is like the classic, a lot of people on Macs, what would they, what, what would we show off what we've done the best? 
Yeah, I struggle with that one because we have very aggressive timelines for all of our successive prototypes and the effort to try and get ingress plumbed through on a Mac is purely for like local experience, kick the tires testing work. Like nobody's going to deploy KCP on a Mac in production and expect that uh, ingress is going to work. Uh, it, it's only going to be on a Linux or maybe Windows host, right? So I, I just don't know that we can justify the time right now. I, I agree. If there's somebody in the community who feels fixing that, go ahead. And I, and would, I think I would avoid too much scripting and stuff, plumbing, glue everywhere here in this area. So is the ingress stuff fundamental to seeing the value proposition of KCP in prototype two or prototype three? You can see um, cluster failover. So it's visible, like looking at the API objects, you can see my deployment was on cluster one. I killed cluster one. Now it's on cluster two. Uh, you know, it would be icing on the cake if you could just keep going to one URL and have that continue to function and you're none the wiser that it the the physical compute transitioned but don't know that it's critical I, I don't know this is the this is the eternal tension in the you're hunting you're we're, we're hunting for two things we're hunting for product market fit right which can you concisely and clearly demonstrate the ideas to your to your audience and every every potential user that you exclude is someone who might actually be part of your audience um conversely the time you spend on that has to be well justified so it's like i i'm hearing the um the time spent conservation and then i think there's a we, we don't really have an advocate for the audience yet and so finding an advocate looking for like what that minimal thing would be I agree, Andy, like this is a tough one. This is like the, I, I struggle with this too, is if you could hit three times as many users in the pitch, are you gonna have three times as many potential long-term users? Does that change your growth curve? Is kind of the trade-off we're trying to figure out here. For P2, I'd probably say I can buy that argument, um, which is like, hey, Ingress is still this slightly more complex thing on Mac. Here's a set of instructions, or here, here's how you here's how you would get to it yourself. But we don't have that automated. But here's what you would see on a Mac. Probably is, you know, the the minimum step if you can see failover failover. And then the question for P3 is, is the audience we're reaching broad enough? So maybe we can follow up on that later. That's kind of the. Mm -hmm. This is a hard set of trade offs. Um, I certainly bias towards. I'm certainly biasing towards like, are we reaching the audience we want to reach? And this is a little bit like kind versus micro cube versus cube core, where versus K3S even, like where it's like in the early days, cube tried to reach an audience. Some of these additional projects, which were a lot of effort, don't get me wrong, like kind is, you know, 10, 15 person years of work at this point. Um, was that would that have made Cube more successful in the early days? We don't know. Cube kind of had that natural gravity to it, but it was a missing gap in the ecosystem and just trying to figure out like what the same lesson learned from KSB is. So maybe to the, I'll take that as a follow-up with you guys and we can talk through some of the options as well, maybe for prototype three. Uh, there was a question in chat. Do we have to do something different to set up Ingress using KCP or should it be similar to what we usually do? Uh, I think the answer is you you don't have to do anything differently, but Joachim, I'll defer to you. Well, no, you don't have to do anything differently. I mean, yeah, you will need an ingress control on the physical clusters. Uh, it's more about how you sync the ingress from KCP into the physical clusters, and that's what the um ingress controller is taking care of it's a similar approach uh like the deployment splitter it's doing something similar but for ingresses how specific is it to envoy is this a generic uh, thing no 
No, I mean, um, the ingress controller uses uh, exposes an envoy control plane just for local development and testing. Okay, so mm -hmm. instead of relying on on hosts, on, you know, on DNS, which is something that configuring locally can be messy, uh, we use an envoy just to have an endpoint where you can hit and that will take care. No, I mean the ingress controller that we have right now can run without envoy and basically propagate the ingresses between physical clusters. Is there the, the desire to move that into KCP? I mean, we move it into the repository, but is there any sense to merge that into the main binary? I don't think we should merge it into the main one. Okay. Um, it, it's interesting too, because like I know like Craig and them are like the DNS programming. Certainly you can imagine like a local host, an Etsy local host programming DNS on a Mac. I know there's projects out there that tried that for some of like the multi-cluster stuff previously. It's kind of like the, the problem ultimately here is that all local development sucks and just some of it sucks less than others. What is the core concept we're trying to get across? Is it that ingress is possible or that someone locally would do this day to day and there's like the you know you could program you could program localhost you could have the proxy running on the mac you could have um, a more rigorous solution that looks like a smaller version of like what you might use in a production environment kind of what you have joaquin kind of is like what i would call the bottom of a production setup and then you know we've imagined hypothetical higher level things on a single or multiple hosts none of them are going to be identical there's going to be six different approaches maybe even just describing somewhere clearly in our docs like that concept of now that you have these multi-cluster stuff there's like these multiple levels and you could imagine here's how you might approach it you could use etsy localhost for the simple you could um you know you could imagine these kinds of ecosystem things existing here's where we have an example and then you can imagine these others like even that clarification in the readme demo flows might give someone you know like the two levels or three levels like here's how you would set this up on a linux box here's how you could do something similar on a mac that might even be enough in the short run doesn't make sense to move that into an issue it's a good first issue, isn't it? For somebody who wants to work in this area on Mac and make it nicer and prettier. Yeah, I mean, it, I think that's a good idea. We could very, uh, fairly quickly and easily describe the like IP and networking issues when you've got a VM in the middle as you do on a Mac. Um, yeah. And if only, not only, if only that. distributed development was easy. So, so I consider this Mac use case to be kind of similar or maybe exactly like, how do you do ingress to a private cluster that doesn't have a public IP address? That's Which, actually a great analogy, Hiram. So, and yeah, the question is like, how are we going to tunnel that? Um, and I don't know like when we want to handle that case, but I imagine that there's some future iteration of HTTP that we're going to want to support that. Yeah. The, and that's like an example that maybe like if you could if we could sketch out like some of this too is like we're trying to seed ideas like the, a key part of seeding an ecosystem and and having a project that excites people is being able to orient them and explain like you know we're not providing this but you could imagine how this could exist first issue kind of concept this is where you could go we know like we know enough to describe what you need to do, but we can't do it ourselves because we're focused on these other aspects. Call for participation, motivated people. I mean, like Raphael actually was pinging me in the background. I don't know if he's on, I don't think he's on the meeting today, but like Raphael, like this is kind of like his bread and butter of stuff he goes and does, like gets it working in various environments. He did the global load balancer operator early on, um, you know, getting folks like that, giving them a, a hook under which they could then go do their own thing and then referencing out is like a key early community building aspect that we could do. And connect that back to the idea to have a end of community call issue uh, session. We should have a small pitch of those good first issues. There are people here probably on the call who look for something to work on. And actually like maybe that's even like 
as a fundamental principle for the project going forward as we transition from prototype to project phase, do we want to make sure that we just always have three or four good first issues? Jason kind of did that early on, and it, it's always one of those hard ones. I'm not great at it. I know I, I generate ideas, and then I like I don't have time to follow up on them. Um, maybe that's something we could make sure we always have three or four good starter ideas that are approachable um, and talk about at the end of the meeting. Sounds good. So we have more than four. We have actually nine, nine open. Not sure everything here is helpful. But we you know, some. yeah, and actually, like going even further, um, ideas for people that we'd love to see try in like a readme is a way of inviting ideas in the ecosystem. So like these are kind of like the evolving ones might make sense to define some areas that would be like, these would be really cool. We're not focused on them ourselves, like as a non-goal section or as a not within the scope of whatever becomes the project, but we would really want to enable the ecosystem side. Uh, it's almost like halfway between a, a good first issue and actually here's some stuff that we just don't have time to chase. If you can think about it, let's document it here. It's kind of a little bit like uh, when people document the users of their GitHub open source project, like here's the people using it and what they're using it for. This is almost like the, the, the one, the meta second level, the second meta level of that, which is here's some areas where you could really um, think about, like we, we know there's like some interesting ideas here. We'd love to see that. We'll see the idea and then we're willing to say like, we just won't have time to go after it because um, it's important, but we won't, we won't be able to do it ourselves. Could be another, and that's like, another label, basically. It's not a good first issue, which is something small, but just things we might do if we had infinite time, but uh, it, they're not in the focus at the moment. Yeah, and, and even like in the defining what a project is, what is KCP not? KCP not is not uh, a full system. Like we are not going to build a project that does ingress at scale to multi clusters, but we think that's a really great place for people. And there's like, here's like three ideas or three places. And here's folks who have also started looking at it. And that's a place for them to say like, hey, I want to share what I've done in the ecosystem. So like Cube did this early on as well, like um, the Cube 101 blog. And um, some of it is just calling out to people who want to go chase ideas, giving people ideas to chase. Um, and there's like three levels of it. There's like orienting them at the first root place you see it, like in a project readme or in a, a sub document of roadmap versus not roadmap or what the project isn't. Cube did that, like Cube is in a pass. Um, here's some people going and doing that. And then there's the issues, which are like bigger ideas that people have, but we, we're never going to get to them. And then there's the good first issues, which is much more approachable, valuable part of the project. Yeah, should we use the time to to go through them those which make sense and do quick pitch maybe is there interest i think some are old so we don't have to go to to all of them but maybe the last ones sure so andy maybe if you want to start that's yours i think yes uh so we are using klog for logging and Klog only logs the file name, not the full path when it prints out a log message. And we have a bunch of files, for example, named controller.go. And it's hard to tell when uh, you see a log message, what controller did it come from? So we either can switch to a different logging library, which could log full paths, or we can just rename our files so that they have unique uh, file names. So. First step, I think we'll rename the files. And uh, this is a good first issue and help wanted because uh, this can be done per file. And um, I would expect and hope that if there's multiple people interested that you could pick um, 
a file at a time or a couple of files at a time and open up separate PRs for, for each of these. I would like to add, um, maybe make another issue for that user agents. We should be able to see from requests which controller issues them. Same problem, basically understanding yeah. logs when you see them. And I was thinking, uh, I don't know, uh, in my subconscious, like, I don't know that we want like the E to E tests, or I don't know that we care so much about those. Um, cause it's really just for K log logging, but, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I would say primary focus would be on code that's in either package or command. And if folks want to do the, the test stuff, that's cool too. Uh, you're muted, Stefan. Next one is about Corden and Dwayne. Jordan is not, uh, Jason's not here. Anybody can talk about that? You're playing, do you know the I background? Can. Yeah, so yeah, this one depends on uh, getting the API type or API changes merged, which is PR524. But the idea is I want a command line. Uh, command to be able to mark a physical cluster as unschedulable, which is coordinating it. I want to drain any workloads off the physical cluster, which uh, basically means getting them uh, reassigned to another physical cluster. And then I want to uncordon and mark a cluster schedulable again. So once the API changes are merged, these can be added to the KCP cube control plugin that we have in our repo. And you can start writing that now, right? Yes. By, by vendoring the right branch. No reason to wait for that. Yes. Sounds good. Um, in a similar direction, there was a discussion about login plugins. Is there anybody using OIDC login in some context, like this plugin which exists uh, as a third party one? If there's experience, please ping me. I'm interested. And I think Kyle and Chris will be as well. Right. Um, this one, that's about an upstream issue. It's all explained here in detail. We are missing default markers in upstream API types, which means they are not published by this open API spec of Cube. And the result is if those fields which lack the default marker at the same time, there are keys in in lists which represent maps. So like um, a list of, of uh, volumes or something, and every name is unique, and name either must be required, or if it's optional, it must have a default. Um, this breaks down if we don't have defaults from OpenAPI, because then it's op still optional, it's not required, but um, we cannot default it. And the result is that um, validation in, in Cube just re or in KCP rejects an object, which would normally be accepted in Cube. So it's described here in detail. Um, it's a chance for some upstream, easy upstream API fixes. So if somebody likes API changes and looks into that, um, would be valuable. Uh, the sooner we get into upstream, the, the earlier the, the issue is gone. Like the usability issue today is that we get a validation error. We can work around that in KCP, obviously, by overlaying OP, open API specs in some way. So we know Cube's open API spec is incomplete, and then we add something to the, to the spec. This is, of course, a workaround, but we want to be generic. We don't want those overlays. So the correct way is to fix it upstream. Look for those 
map key fields for those which are optional and then add defaults to so defaults which are implemented in cube. All right. Any other that sticks out and is worth to look into? I'm not sure about those exit criteria here. Paul is not here. Yeah, Andy, I can can you comment? The first is issue off of that. Okay. Yeah, read me. Maybe it's something if somebody wants to contribute to the to the prototype script. That's also welcome. Yeah. Four tens about to go away. I I approved the PR yesterday. All right, I okay. got to merge it. Okay. All right, so I, I would suggest we we stop here. The others, I think, they are old or they are even assigned to people already. So I don't think we have to go through them. Okay. Any other topic? I'm curious to dig deeper into the um, tecton trigger architecture and uh, with the little bit of time we've got left. Sounds cool. So there's no other topic than last call. Then we use it last, how many minutes? 11 minutes for tecton and triggers and stuff. So my, my understanding was, uh, correct me if this is wrong. So you've got GitHub doing a webhook call to presumably an ingress or a route that's going to KCP that then is plumbed through to a physical cluster. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah. Um, can I present my screen and share uh, my terminal? Try footwork. Yeah, hope you're able to see the screen, right? Something is loading, yes. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this is what I've been trying to do. Um, I have my um, KCP running in a pod, right? And then pipelines and then triggers. So all of them are running in the individual pods. And um, I'm trying to set up a event listener so that it can listen to any GitHub pull request, right? So this is the first barrier I'm facing, wherein um, I've I've just set up my event listener, and immediately uh, I get this error, right? Um, the event listener that I'm setting up in the KCP cluster is actually looking for a service account in one of the namespaces that KCP creates. That I mean, that's in the physical cluster because that that KCP yes. prefix is physical cluster yeah. namespace. Yeah. So I, I I just listed those um, you know clusters here. So it's 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 this cluster and it's looking inside that. So I was actually quite confused at this step only, um, but I tried with secrets as my answer, and uh, so yeah. So he, here's that event listener I'm talking about, which is currently failing, where it's looking for this service account. This is what is defined. Who creates that service account? Um, that's right here. So I'm applying this file as well, and it's created right here. Your, along so the, that's going to KCP. That's yes. This is in KCP. Is KCP uh, Clayton? Should we be syncing service accounts down from KCP to P clusters? Uh, no. A underlying. So this is the previous discussion. Yeah. The physical cluster, so a work, so this is like high level conceptual. And I actually, this is documented somewhere and I can't find it now. This is driving me crazy. I was like frantically going through and getting nerd sniped by Dr. Okay, so somewhere, somewhere, Jason and I had a really long discussion. We worked through the, the scenario for it. It's documented somewhere. I will try to find that after this meeting. But the rough mindset is if you are, if your service account is copied down, that implies that that service account now has permissions on that underlying cluster which changes that workload to be tied to that underlying physical cluster because we have no visibility into what it's doing. And so that will never be a def by default transformation. There may be a need to support that, but it would not happen by default. There would have to be something explicit. So service account token injection does not happen by default. 
to the underlying physical cluster. In fact, from a workload perspective, we don't want workloads to have service accounts in the underlying physical cluster, except in a few specific cases. Yep. And there's like some examples are in the very early days of Cube, we were like, oh, there's actually, it's really awesome that workloads can become aware of the underlying cluster. And so we were like, oh, you know, we want the workload to be able to read its endpoints, right? And so, you know, imagine starting a pod that on startup uses a service account token to read the set of endpoints and set up a watch and does some dynamic stuff like a stateful workload. In practice, what everybody did was just ask for root access on the underlying cluster. It's like literally 99% of all controllers just basically ask for root access and they usually do it by asking for a secret or something like that. So what we're trying to avoid is the mindset that when a workload is copied down, that it has access to that cluster, which means the service accounts that it should talk to would be the service accounts on the in the workspace, not on the physical cluster. And a workload that needs some behavior of that either will say is in a KCP use case or is a special case or requires something to actually be turned on in the sinker that says, hey, by the way, I'm willing to break the idea of encapsulation. So concretely, uh, we haven't done any of that. I really wish I could find yeah. this doc because this is going to drive me crazy because we actually spec'd out the high level and then we need to go add to that. Okay, here's a concrete use case in this particular scenario. How would we solve it? And then go through the design exercise on it. Right. So we have a pod that Tecton's trying to create that is referencing a service account slash secret in the physical cluster that doesn't exist. Uh, so my question, I guess, would be, what is Tecton doing in this pod? And what, what API calls is it making? Yeah, yeah. So as I was saying, so th th this is the first problem, right? And um, I I'll just quickly finish on this point. So because obviously for all the reasons the service account is not synced, what I did was instead uh, create a secret here, right? uh with the cube config of the kcb cluster but what so what are you trying to do with that service account like i think that's like the i think i need to know and andy needs to know so we can capture it and make sure like what does that service account do yeah so like if you didn't specify the service account and you didn't specify a cube config mm -hmm. what is the pod doing <laughs> right I think the use case is when an event is there, when a GitHub pull request happens, um, the event listener, right, is supposed to create a deployment. Uh, sorry, it's supposed to create a task run um, to do some action. Okay, so it needs permission to create Tecton resources. Yes. Yes. But where, what, what is that Tecton resource going? So it's going to create a task run. Is yes. that task run supposed to be seen by the user? or by the system? Like who acts on that task run? Is it for the end user? I mean, I, I would say um, probably not. I mean, I, I'll, I'll let Broth answer as well, but I, I mean, it's gotta go, if Tecton's running as a managed operator service in a KCP world, like it's gotta be visible to, in a workspace to Tecton, right? Yeah, I would expect yeah. that to be created in a work in the workspace which would be the like if that's the case then this is a scenario where the service account token that you should have in the physical cluster is a service account token back to the workspace yes. and that's kind of what it sounds like you're saying when you're creating that kcp cube config is that fair mm -hmm. yeah that sounds right okay that that is intended which would be if you but that doesn't what that doesn't allow you to do though is create task runs on the underlying cluster which is by default designed. So in that case, mm -hmm. task run is a high level API, not a low level API, a logical API, not a physical API, like just distinguishing between where those would be. There are use cases that I could imagine where you actually wanted to create task runs on the underlying cluster, but that depends on, is that the goal of what you're trying to do as a service? And that's like a bigger philosophical point, right? Like you can design a service that runs the high level, you could design a service that delegates to the lower level. It sounds like this is you're still talking high level. That's my guess as well. Like I, I'm assuming this is I just want to try and get Tecton work or event triggers and listeners working in a KCP world. Like step but one. but what are you trying to get them working for? And that's kind of like the 
because so and this is like i think we need to get better at like this would be the doc for like so you want to build a workload controller not a high level controller there is value in designing something that gets distributed to the individual clusters but when you do that that means those individual clusters have to support it so there is a world in which everything in your fleet underneath a kcp for a particular domain has a task has the tecton on it but if you do that then inherently all of that logic is then local but that's a fundamental trade-off right you're making the trade-off you want to distribute all the high level work down to a lot of clusters and then summarize the high level work back that's a little bit like deployments in kcp a separate mindset would be you're running pods but there's nothing tied to the cluster for your workload and it, again like we're kind of talking about it happens in the workspace tecton becomes a complete high level but that does mean if that physical cluster can't talk to the logical cluster because there's an outage or connectivity that means that event listener pauses and does nothing which means you don't get reliability so this is you're distributing the problem or you're centralizing the problem and it's just really important like we don't try to if we're designing for centralized we should say we're designing for centralized not distribution and here's the trade-off we're going to get from it i'd probably jason if you were here would like uh be able to like orient on where we are just to make sure that's like something we discuss so in that in this case brought like it sounds like the problem is is that we have not implemented the service account token distribution for implicitly mounted service accounts for workspace service accounts as part of the sinker that is i think this is actually captured in the design doc let me i and i filed an issue for it i just I linked it in the chat it's issue 206. uh we talked it, a couple of times about it already yeah it so there's a section for it in the um design under workload strategies but it's not been filled out so it's secrets and config maps um i'll put a thing in here um access for uh shoot i need to come up with a name but it's like um configuration service accounts and access to okay um given that we're running out of time so um what would be your suggestion in which direction should i go forward to sort of figure out how to run this triggers i mean the kcp cube config you're doing seems like passing creating a secret at the high level that has the token a token and then putting that in and seeing it like that's a workaround it sounds like you're blocked unless that token can be created today yeah yeah so that's what i was getting at so once i do this the event listener is active so the secret is indeed working um but but then what happens is when i actually trigger a pull request um the deployment uh, right which is supposed to get created that again is looking for the same service account so that 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 is a whole you know sort of who creates thing. the deployment uh, uh, service the, accounts service accounts uh should be copied down but we can't copy service accounts down until we do the mapping that changes them from like if we pass service accounts down today they would get a service account on the underlying cluster we want service accounts in the deployment so this is i think this is a not yet implemented key sinker functionality and so mm -hmm. The workaround is you have to use either default service account or we copy the service account and tell people that and, and specifically not copy role bindings, because if we copy role bindings today, technically, like you could ask for those privileges, we'd copy them down. Um, we need to actually make sure we're not doing half of that. We need to do both parts of it. I okay. added this topic to this talk we are okay. working on at the moment, challenges in the Synca in general. Um, maybe it makes sense to start a discussion there or in Slack to continue, continue this topic, maybe to find a workaround for you to be unblocked. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for that, yeah. Um, I'll try to spend more time on this and try to just try a couple of things in forum KCP is always there, I hope. <laughs> start a thread there, I mean, those things are just not implemented. It's not that we don't want them. We need thoughts uh, going into that and find a plan or make a plan and implement it. Yeah, okay. this, this seems like a pretty, this may be like something we put on like a P3 experience blocker, which is like, we just need a basic workaround for tokens yeah. and service accounts. Yeah. 
Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, thanks everyone for the time. Thank you. All right, so we are slightly above the top of the hour. Thank you, everybody, and see you next week. Great.